Okay, so this is my review of The Undoing Episode 5, Trial by Fury. This episode is directed by Suzanne Beer and written by David E. Kelly. As with all my reviews, please no book spoilers here. Please leave that for somewhere else. Okay, so with this penultimate episode of The Undoing, you start to now really get a light on what the show is trying to say and where we're seeing the biggest possible character growth and where I think they're gonna land this. And it's surprising because you may think this show at first was more about the character of Grace, but at the end of the day, it seems like the focus leaning more into the theme is actually about Jonathan and what's such a revelation about where Jonathan's head is at this whole season is the big reveal at the end of this episode that Henry has the sculpting hammer that killed Elena in his violin case and that we could definitely conclude that Henry whether he was with someone else or not and how exactly it happened, he killed Elena with that hammer. But this makes so much sense now why Jonathan has been a little off around Henry, almost a little scared of him, but also some guilt there that he's hiding a secret with Henry. And this makes sense now in the last episode that Jonathan's on TV and he's like, I think I do know who did this. And it also makes sense now his behavior towards Fernando because it seems like Jonathan and Fernando have some kind of respect for each other. And we saw the scene when they were at the apartment, but you also see constantly Jonathan deterring Haley Fitzgerald, the lawyer, to not really pin Fernando. And he even says in this episode at lunch to Grace saying, I think it's a weak move to even pin it on Fernando, that he's too sympathetic. But really where this is rooting from is a guilt here that Jonathan has that his side of this trial is trying to now pin the blame on someone he knows who didn't do it. And this is also someone who he knows is the victim in this situation, clearly losing his wife, but also this is the guardian of his daughter. So it makes sense why we constantly see Jonathan's face of just some sort of remorse and guilt for how they're treating Fernando in this trial. And in most trial episodes in a show, it usually gets really intense and you really gotta focus on what they're saying in the trial, but this more falls into a trial where it's not as important what they're actually saying in the trial than the reactions to it and what it actually is showing you thematically just as the big picture of it. Meaning Haley Fitzgerald here is really exposed as pretty damn harsh to Fernando here. And he even calls her out saying like, you don't care about me and you're vile. And you see that happen here because Haley's like, did you get psychiatric help? Did Elena have psychiatric help? And she's doing anything to win the case. That's what she does, right? But behind her, the real people that should be getting help is that whole family with Grace and Jonathan and the son. And it's showing you now what the show's trying to say because it's like you have all this pettiness and drama and deceit in this rich family and they hire this rich lawyer, but no one really cares about the victims in this situation with Miguel and Fernando. And you see that all these just lies led to this lower class family paying the price for the sins of this upper class culture. And that goes all the way up to Franklin, Grace's father. And what they're showing you with Franklin this episode is again, now it makes so much sense why he's so pushy towards Grace. Like, you know, I don't know how this is helping Henry because you keep saying this is helping the grandson because I think Franklin also knows Henry did this and obviously wants it to just be pinned on Jonathan to get Henry cleared. And what makes sense now is this, we've seen in other shows where, where would Henry get this kind of murderer gene in him to maybe be capable of this? And we see with his grandfather, Franklin, last episode when he's making these threats about basically that he killed Jonathan and that he's no one to screw with, clearly he got these tendencies from him. And that could just be that Franklin, I don't necessarily think was at the scene, but Henry ran to him maybe and told him what happened. And Franklin's just like helping him cover it up. Who really knows? We'll probably find out next episode, obviously being the finale, but there's gonna be some things cleared up because again, Franklin did leave this party too. And he could have been the one following Jonathan that night as well and finding them. And somehow Henry got involved or Franklin did the murder and just gave the hammer to Henry, some psychotic thing. Who really knows, but whoever it was, they kind of give that hint in the court that they exited the back. That's why they weren't on camera. But Jonathan clearly knows who did it, whether it was Franklin or Henry or still himself. But I think thematically it's gonna make the most sense it would be Henry now or Franklin. Because when we're talking about character writing and really good writing, you start with a character starting somewhere on one pole and by the end of this thing gets to 
character growth to another pole, some kind of change that supports what the show is trying to say. And maybe we know Jonathan now as a deceitful guy, but learning where his environment was and why he's the way he is. And the sick thing being, okay, it wasn't his dog that got killed. It was his sister. But the real trauma of it isn't even almost his sister dying. It's that his family blamed him and he was 14. So he's used to taking the blame in his life like he is now with this murder, but it also makes sense to why he lies so much and how they say he's a sociopath, right? Because how else could he react to his parents blaming him? He's not gonna just have guilt and say, yeah, you're right, because that's even too much to handle as a kid. So he has this developed in his head now and his defense mechanism to almost not acknowledge what he's really doing. But I think his character growth will be that It seems like they're setting up next episode. He's going to be the one to come forward and defend Fernando here because it seems like Haley's making all this momentum to get Fernando kind of in some serious trouble. And that's what obviously Franklin wants. That's what Henry wants. But this might be Jonathan's character growth where he actually does the right thing, stops lying for once and having someone else suffer and say, I know who did it and it wasn't Fernando. And say if it's actually his son or maybe Franklin. Or actually he just takes the blame even if he didn't do it just to protect his son, but to have someone who is completely innocent not pay the price anymore. But you know I've been all about that Grace did this. I'm still not counting that out. And I'm still thinking with everyone's theories about Franklin, is it Jonathan, is it Henry, is it Grace? I even said last episode review that there's a long shot now, it's Henry, because they kept showing him in so many scenes just spying on everything and being so interested in what was going on. So there had to be a reason for that. But maybe this is actually, it. like, everyone's doing in a sense, and it's like this family murder, and that's why Grace was at the scene too and kind of blacked out at what she saw maybe her son do. Who knows? But it's going to be interesting to see how this all kind of wraps. Or even too, it could have been Grace and... Henry the Hammer and it's all coming back to her. I don't know, but I'm happy they kept it now super mysterious and we're kind of on the edge of our seat here. But it's cool because I really suggest watching this episode actually twice because you get to see now from the top all of Henry's behavior and how this episode even opened with him really interested looking at his iPhone at, again, the footage of his father about to say on TV, who did this, who he thinks did it. Like he's paranoid he's going to say him. And you see there's even a line where Grace says to Jonathan on the phone, about Henry, you gotta take that iPhone away from him. He's devouring all this coverage, obviously with paranoia. But Jonathan says this line, I tried to do that to him once and he turned into the kid from The Exorcist. Another big hint at this maybe scary behavior Henry is capable of. And you see Henry has this behavior that's scaring Jonathan at lunch where he's just like, ha, like they're calling this detective a squirmy worm and we're gonna win this thing. Cause if Jonathan knows that his son did this and he's okay with just winning this with no guilt or no fear. He's seeing the real sociopath here and probably feels responsible he created it. And a big key here too, I'm saying with the defense of Jonathan's guilt towards Fernando, there's a great shot they have where he's at security check and he faces Fernando and you could see it in his face that he feels awful that they're pinning it on him. And what's also interesting, what I love about the camera work here is with Jonathan is when Haley says in this scene, in the room in the beginning with Grace and Jonathan. If you didn't do it, who did? The camera all around Jonathan goes out of focus and it makes us kind of feel his panic and anxiety of the information he knows who actually did it. So like I always do, I'm gonna nitpick some things I actually didn't really like about this episode. I thought it dragged on a little bit in the beginning, in particular, the sequence where Grace was on the phone with Jonathan went on for a little bit too long and something about this episode didn't feel that entertaining. And I can't put my thumb on it why, but it felt relatively slow for a penultimate episode. I also had this weird thought watching the trial, thinking about the original defense attorney in Badger, why he was even in the show to begin with. Because the whole time in this show is two scenes was these identical scenes, him telling Grace that he thinks Jonathan's not a murderer, but he is a jerk. Okay, what other point was there to him? I don't really see that. I don't think he was that necessary. Oh, and so also, the worst thing that Jonathan's character really almost ever did, even besides the affair, was letting his son know about it and take that secret on with him and let him have that burden. Awful. And Grace rightfully yells at him, but what's so like frustrating to me is I love Nicole Kidman as an actress. Like. 
she's in the Hall of Fame of actresses, right? But like even with sports, when you see these Hall of Fame athletes, there's always things people can use against them that's like the, like one asterisk in their career. And I think with Nicole Kidman, this happens every time. And I have to point it out because it's not perfection because anytime she has these high emotional scenes where she's crying and starts yelling, she gets so into it because she's such a good actress, but she lets that Australian accent slip in so much. And it makes you wonder like, who is the dialect coach? Can't they figure out a way for her to keep that consistent? And it's no excuse because it's high emotional because a lot of people fall into this, but there's some great actors who don't. So that's the one thing I get so frustrated with because it always takes me out a little bit and she has a tendency to do it a lot. Oh, and I thought it was silly. The scene came off silly in the restaurant with Jonathan confessing to Grace what really happened and it wasn't a dog and it was sister, but why do they write her that her name was Katie the kitten? I don't understand that. It made me laugh. Just say Katie. And, and I think Hugh Grant's been amazing in this show, but in particular, I did not think he was great in this scene. He seemed kind of overwhelmed by all the emotions he had to put out there and that he wasn't really convincing me. Maybe because they gave him that line, Katie the kitten, and it's just silly to say. And a really important line that kind of sums up with this whole episode and this season's kind of setting up for Jonathan's character growth and thematically with the culture I'm talking about of this like rich culture I can get away with anything is the scene when Jonathan's looking at the pictures of Elena and he's telling Haley I love her madly and Haley says we don't need to give them a good man just someone who didn't commit the murder it's business you know this is nothing to do with emotions for her this is that cold feeling of just like you're paying the best attorney in the game and they're the best attorney for a reason because they have no soul but Jonathan you see is tempted to break here and actually show a good side of him and say the truth and not let the wrong person go down for this and I highly suggest if you love this show if you really want to see an amazing trial scene and a very similar story to this it came out this year defending Jacob on Apple TV plus you would love it I think it's a little better than this they're both great and it's very similar, but I think if you like this show, you're gonna love that show. But we gotta see how this wraps. We still don't know the full answer, what happened, how much Franklin, how much Grace, how much Jonathan actually knew. Did Henry actually commit it fully? Was this a team effort? How is this all hidden? Where does Sylvia even really fall in all of this? There's gotta be more to her as well and what she knew and how maybe so many people again knew so much and it's just a story of also grace just being out of the know and suffering in her own sense from that or just being in denial about it so we'll see but i'm gonna give this episode an 8.8 .8. again this comes from just my feeling of the entertainment value of it where i think the writing was top notch the acting was pretty solid but this is just a feeling and that just goes by watching it and something about this felt like it wasn't as gripping as previous episodes. And it's weird to say because usually the trial episodes are more gripping, but I don't know, something I just didn't feel as much as intensity that I would have liked to, but that's just me. Again, how do you judge that, right? That's Everyone's got a different feel watching any show, So, but that's how I felt. But I gotta give David E. Kelly props because I ripped apart his trial scene in Big Little Eyes season two. I thought it was terrible and it was so theatrical and wasn't realistic, but this one was more grounded in reality. Maybe I would have liked the judge to be a little more involved, but so be it, it still didn't go overboard where you're like, oh, that would never happen in court. Much better job here. So props to that. Credit where it's due. But let me know what you thought of this episode. Let me know your theories on what's going to happen in this finale. Anything you observed here, please put in the comments below. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter and Instagram for more of me. And I also ask, it would help me so much to be able to do f these videos full time. I have a full time job, so I can only do so many in a given month. And I'd love to give you guys more content. And what would help me do that is $2 a month commitment. You'll see that. PayPal link down below. It'd be amazing for any support I can get. I'd be truly grateful. So one day I can do this full time. And please make sure to come back next week for my review of the finale. And I'll see you next time.